welcome to this special edition of Extreme Reloading. Today we're talking about 0 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that is. You know, maybe you've heard the same story that I heard. It's the story of a sniper in a desert situation, and every shot that he takes, his spotter says, it's falling short, falling short. No matter what he does, he cannot get that bullet to hit its target. So he places all of his ammo right out there in the sun, waits for a little while, it gets nice and hot, then he loads around, takes another good shot, and he gets his target. The round obviously was at a higher temperature, and it left the muzzle faster than it was previously. Well, I don't know if that's a true story or not, but it is true in the sense that uh, warmer temperatures will produce higher or faster muzzle velocities. Now, shooters have known about this for quite a long time, and so have the powder manufacturers. And not too long ago, well, a little while ago, a number of manufacturers started producing what's called temperature insensitive powders. And one of the first companies to really come out with a strong line of these powders was Hodgdon. And specifically, they have a whole series of powders. These are their extreme powders. And they're called extreme because they are temperature compensated or temperature insensitive powders. Now that doesn't mean that they're absolutely temperature insensitive, but they're less sensitive than other smokeless powders. You know, another company that came out with temperature insensitive powders is Alliant. This is RL15, and here it clearly says it's consistent at all temperatures. Same concept. So when you're working up a load, and you've got everything pretty much set exactly as you want it, the last thing that I do is I make sure that I take that final load, that exact setup that I'm, I'm going to be using in the future, and I shoot that load over my Ehlers chronograph at 0 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the experiment that we'll be talking about today. So on my 308 Winchester Ruger Precision Rifle, the very last step is to develop a temperature velocity curve. And so I looked for a day in the summer at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It was darn near August. Didn't look like we were going to be getting too many more hot days. Had just been sitting in the 90s uh, previous to that, but we had a hot spell here. So here we are in August. Finally got a day that's approaching 100 degrees. We actually hit 98 degrees Fahrenheit while, while I was out at the range and uh, chronographed this load. Again, this is out of a cold barrel, first shot out of this rifle for the day. Let's take a look at how this all goes. Well, here we are out, out at the range, kind of a, let me say, a balmy summer day. And um, we're at about 100 degrees. I'm not the only person out here. There's a couple other diehards out that are shooting. We're actually at about 98 degrees, 97, a little bit of a breeze, so it makes it kind of comfortable. I'm going to be shooting a few rounds of these Sierra Tipped Match Kings. This is kind of my bullet of choice for the Ruger Precision Rifle. This is a 168 grain Sierra Tipped Match King, loaded very carefully. If you watched our series on this gun and crafting this particular round, lots of good stuff going on with this. And what I'm doing is I'm using RL-15 and I want to see how it responds to changes in temperature. We're going to run this. I'll call it 0 to 100. This is our 100 degree day. We're going to shoot it from a cold barrel. This ammo has been sitting out in ambient temperatures for at least half an hour. Um, and uh, then we're going to shoot again at 0 degrees or maybe even below in the winter time. So let's get going on this one. Then I repeated that same experiment 
exact same chronograph on New Year's Day 2019 and we had not zero degrees but negative eight degrees. Let's roll that footage. It's definitely below zero here and happy new year to you. It's a cold day and uh, but absolutely no wind so that's really really good not going to be affecting this Ehler chronograph uh, as far as wind is concerned. Uh, I gotta get shooting though because electronics in this kind of temperature don't do that well. This is a cold rifle. I cleaned the bore this morning. It has not been fired. We're gonna fire first round which is the biggie to see um, how it's going to do. I'll fire another couple rounds uh, just to see how it changes once the barrel warms up just that little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is 168 grain Sierra tipped match kings with reloader 15 powder. That feels better. Then with all that data in hand, I developed a temperature velocity curve. And I also plugged in other temperatures that I had chronographed about the 60 degree range and, and so on and so forth. And it really came out to be more or less a linear relationship. That's good. Now once you have that all plugged in and measured, then you use that in your ballistics calculations. And at this point, I know my range, I know my load, I can check the wind with my Kestrel, and I can check the temperature also with the Kestrel, and then I can look that up on my trajectory curves. But by golly, this really does work. So if you've got your load darn near finished, maybe even you think it's a finished load, ask yourself, well, did I test this over different uh, ambient temperatures, air temperatures. And if you haven't, do yourself a favor and do that, especially if you're developing a hunting load. You know, you may develop this hunting load uh, in June and July, pretty, pretty warm temperatures. Um, but then come hunting season, October, November, it's quite a bit colder. You might have a little bit of a longer shot, two, maybe 300 yard shot out there, and you miss. Well, how is that muzzle velocity and your corresponding trajectories and drops and all that good stuff that are completely dependent upon muzzle velocity? And if you're not using one of these temperature insensitive powders, then you really need to do an experiment like this. Now, you may not need to go as extreme as 0 to 100, but rather try to fit it to your uh, shooting situation. That's just a little tip, and let me tell you, it works. Thanks for watching this special edition of Extreme Reloading.